This is Carthage State Penitentiary. It houses 1,923 male inmates, 118 female, and 282 administrative and security personnel. I am the warden of Carthage. As such, I am the absolute monarch of this institution. If I had my way, I would raise it to the ground. Detect a note of distress from the deputy warden. Segregating the kids from the older men is already pushing regulations too far. To decorate this place like a kindergarten, 
might make us a laughing stock. Well, Bruce, how are you there? Good. Hope you're through horsing around. Yes, sir. Good. This is the Indian kid. On your feet, Ronson. How are you, Johnny? Okay. You broke Gregory's nose. Are you aware of that? I heard. Well, do you mind telling me why? Ronson. Never mind, Captain. If you want to talk to me, just ask. Arapaho Indian, huh? Yeah, I think that's his tribe. Well, what do you think, Dutch? Well, my opinion, for what it's worth, he's all teeth and lathered with problems. And what do you recommend? Putting him on ice till he finds his manners. You mean at the first sign of trouble, you advocate solitary confinement for a 17-year-old kid? He's old enough to kill a man, Morton. Yes, but under what conditions? He was drunk. It was a pool hall fight. And he brains a man with a pool cue. He's not what you'd call a meeting. Look, he doesn't belong in a penitentiary in the first place. Let's at least wait until Dr. Metz can do a psychiatric workup on him, shall we? You know, there's a possibility we might be able to help him, even here. Hey, he rates above average on the Wexler intelligence scale. And his MMPI shows average response. But I've never worked with an Indian before. His childhood is a vast unknown as far as I'm concerned. Did you do a thematic apperception? Uh, certainly. Well? well? He's loaded. Every association was fighting. Why do you think he's so hostile? Well, that's easy. He hates white men. Yeah, but why? Oh, Sam, I... I'd rather not go through one of your penetrating question periods. He hates white men because he's an Indian. There must be something that we can do to take the pressure off. Well, sure, we can reenact the Battle of the Little Bighorn to help bend his aggressions. Now, look, couldn't you put him into group therapy? Will you allow me to make those decisions, Warden? <laughs> oh, Jimmy, how are you? Oh, good morning, Sam. I wanted to ask you something. Is there anything you can do to stop the others teasing the Indian boy? I'd be exceeding my responsibilities as con boss. Every new fish has to find his own level. You know that, Warden. All right, I won't interfere with ritual. This boy's a bomb with ears. He can go off any minute. He's already killed one man. Well, so have you. So what? Oh, but mine was a crime passion now. Well, nevertheless, your wife's lover is lying headless in his grave from a shotgun blast at short range. That doesn't mean you're still a man of violence. Well, one's passion cools with age. Have you ever done time with an Indian? Sure. There was Joe Yankton. He was an Apache, flat and ten for cattle wrestling. And uh, Freddie Longfish, he did a five-spot for us, and, uh, but they're both on the street now. Of course, there's always old Chief Claw Eagle. He's still here doing the total. That's right. The old man that's in the hospital all the time with the kidney trouble. Yeah. The old Chief. You know, you elbow him about being an Indian, he just smiles at you. Thank you, Jimmy. Have records sent over the file on Chief Claw Eagle. Brunson! Brunson! Somebody here to see you. Go ahead, Chief. Speak to him in your own language. Wahibeshite Onuda Daguna. I do want to hot tea. No, no, hey, Tan. 
What's this old bum trying to do? Give me the business or something? We thought you might be from the same tribe. The old man's only trying to be friendly. I guess it don't make any difference to you, huh? I just asked to be left alone. Now you just leave me all by my lonely and everything's gonna be all right. Come on, Chief. Upstairs. He's after me to get him whiskey all the time. Poor devil's really got a bad. See you later. Feeling well. Yeah, well, I got a little drunk last night after our party. Would you like a drink? Well, I'd. Oh, go ahead. You deserve one. <sighs> it isn't every night you get to see a good murder. You know, the, uh, the 
ancient Romans used to pay a lot of money to see men killed. It was my second. It was my fourth. Let's make a toast uh, to the uh, majesty of the law and the vengeance pertaineth thereto. Well, drink. Go on, you've earned it. Didn't you certify with exactness and truth that Jess Hively was indeed well fried and dead as a mackerel? Go on, drink. Did you know that it is custom for a condemned man to brush his teeth before he meets his maker? No use berating yourself, Warden. I was uh, reading the Bible last night. I found Jess Hively's epitaph. His remembrance shall perish from the earth, and he shall have no name in the street. He will be driven from light into darkness and be chased out of the world. Hively was drunk when he died. The alcoholic content of his bloodstream was 0.24%. Oh, what's wrong with dying drunk? When they slaughter you like a pig in a packing house? I'm glad he was drunk. Dr. Cleary just told me the test findings. Hively was drunk when he was executed. You didn't need a test to know he was drunk. It was obvious. Where'd he get the liquor? Well, that's no mystery. The McLaren gave it to him. Why'd you find that out? I asked him. He made no bones about it. What are you going to do? I've already done it. I fired him. He's got his two weeks' notice. Well, wasn't there an alternative? A suspension or transfer? Look, Warden. Every con in this prison is convinced this morning that McLaren sold Ivory that whiskey, and so am I. Sold it? Why else? I can think of another reason. Look, it really doesn't matter. If I let one guard get away with it, the others will try. And the whole integrity of the security force goes right down the drain. We destroy every ounce of morale. Well, I'd like to talk to McLaren first. That's up to you, sir. That's your right. Warden. But I'd like to remind you that as chief security officer, I have the right to handle my department as I see fit. That's true. And I have the right to overrule you. A pair of fours to that big proud ace of yours. Chief, you have to stand so close. Do you hear me? Play. You're bluffing. Sure. Deal. And a king. Your fours are still high. Check it to you. Bet ten dollars. I thought I told you to stand back, big chief. Play.
I'll see you. And raise you, Lieutenant. Oh. Raise you 20 back. Hey, you got a little sweat on your face there, kid. What are you up to? Oh, gonna cost you money to find out, boy. I'm short. You can go light. I'll know where to find you. What do you got? Two big diggers. I thought I told you to stand back, big chief! Don't you ever call me chief again, you oaky pig? I'm just gonna cut me some meat off of you, Eric Dingen! to the gut, but it didn't sever any big arteries. I merely had to suture and clean him up. Barring any unforeseen complications, he should recover nicely. Excuse me, Ward. Thank you, Lloyd. George. You shouldn't feel embarrassed just because you turned out to be right. Being right's not much satisfaction on a case like this. What do you mean? I appreciate what you're trying to do for the Indian boy. No one wants to see a youngster on a beeline to the electric chair. Then you think he's an incorrigible? It sure looks that way. Well, maybe you're right. Let's have a cup of coffee, George. Who uh, started the fight, George? All the witnesses took the fifth. Well, apparently they've never... Stop chopping him about that Indian business. I doubt it. I don't see how he'll ever adjust under those conditions. Thank you. Doesn't got any choice that I can see. How do you mean? Well, it's not his fault he's an Indian. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, he is an Indian. And if that fact bothers him, does that mean that everyone else in the world has to stay out of his way? Well, they can stop reminding him. He doesn't need reminding. Carries it like a gun, he wears a sign. Yes, but they keep taunting him. They taunt him because to them it's a weakness. His being weak makes them feel strong. Look, in a penitentiary, about all you got going is pride. Be a hair trigger, they'll trump all over you. But George, our problem... It isn't our problem, it's his problem. But that problem is why he's here. One of these days he'll kill somebody. Or they'll kill him. And that's what we're faced with, and so is he. But we still have to try to get to him. We're supposed to be in the business of rehabilitation. How are we going to teach him to get along with other people? You mean white men? Yes, white men. But if we could, George, would you agree it was quite an accomplishment? Of course I would. Good. That's all I wanted to know. No. You wanted to know who started the fight. Now, what difference does that make? None at all. I agree with you. You do? I agree with everything you've said. Well, what are we arguing about? George, I respect your opinions. It's just sometimes difficult to get you to express them clearly. What action have you taken? I transferred him to isolation. I'm sorry. I felt bad about it. For your sake. Save your pity for Johnny Runson. He can use it. Well, Warden, they can think what they want. But I'll give you my word, that whiskey was a present from me to Hively. I believe you, Mac. Why did you do it? Well, Hively was an alcoholic. And 
I knew what he was going through. Because I was a drunk once myself. And I figured it was the least I could do for a man that was facing death. I reckon I'd do it again. Between us, Mr. McLaren, I'm glad you did. But I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. I'm afraid Captain Harker's order will have to stand. After all, his job is to maintain discipline. If I were in his shoes, I'd probably do the same thing. Yes, sir. I probably would myself. Maybe it's just as well you're getting away from behind these walls. You know, sometimes they become a sort of retreat from the world, for us as well as the prisoners. Warden, I don't care too much. I don't think I could take many more executions. I know what you mean. Well, anyhow, I'm a pretty fair carpenter, and I think I'll get by all right. Mr. McLaren, I want to wish you a lot of luck. You're a good man. Well, thank you, Warden. I try to be. Mail me that one from Cyan. Hey, don't Latin chicks groove you? You birds have both been in stir too long. Miss Israel makes pig's feet out of both of them. Warden's house. What? Yeah. Right away. Warden, that Indian kid just tried to hang himself. How are you feeling, son? Did you do it? You got a law? Against knocking yourself off? You bet we have. Figures. What happened? Can't even die in peace. You really wanted to die? No, I was just exercising my neck. All right, sir. I want you to talk straight to me. Why? Because I ain't fit to live. Does that satisfy you? I want you to get some sleep now, Johnny. I'll drop by. We'll talk later. I think we ought to put him under restraint for his own protection. What do you mean, a straitjacket? George, he's not insane. He's angry. Most suicides are just people trying to get even with somebody else. Do we still have straight jackets in this joint? Uh, well, there's a few. I've been around here for years. Well, I want them burned. And I want every inmate in this penitentiary to know they've been burned. If there happen to be any thumb screws or iron boots, or any other instruments of medieval torture in this monument to inhumanity. Please destroy them also. I notice the logs are full of the name Runson. Yes, well, let's say that he's made his presence felt. On the whole, this was one of the more satisfactory inspections, Sam. Well, as long as I've got George Rafferty around, your visits don't worry me, Mr. Randolph. I see you're painting your kindergarten block. What do you think of the color? I think shocking pink would have been more noticeable. <clears throat> your sarcasm is showing. Quell it with this. Hmm. 
No, Sam, you make a luxurious martini. Well, let's say a respectable one. Four to one with an innuendo of bitters. Traditionally faithful. How long will you isolate Runson? I may let him out tomorrow. I'm not sure I heard you correctly. I'm observing a, a routine for the sake of propriety, but I think it's barbaric. The hole never helped anyone. A youngster killed one man, breaks the nose of another, and almost killed a third. And you don't think that warrants solitary confinement? I don't think anything warrants solitary confinement. Warden, you return Runson to your youth block, and you're insisting on trouble. About one more outburst from him, and he'll come to the attention of the board. And they'll start asking questions about your youth segregation program. I'm willing to take that risk. Sam, I was a warden while you were still learning to ride a bicycle. Let me give you a smidgen of advice. You're the keeper of over 2,000 prisoners. If you continue to involve yourself in the woes and ails of individuals, you'll end up with a broken heart. A penitentiary's no walls. It wasn't designed that way. I can't escape the feeling that you loathe the whole institution. You're 110% correct. Then why in the name of heaven did you ask for the job? No one asked you. Rafferty was the obvious choice. Why did you want it? Because I wanted to help renovate the whole system of penology as practiced today. Well, I'll say one thing. It's a unique approach to a job. Mr. Randolph, as a police officer, do you know that I never arrested a man in my life that I didn't try to find out something about him? It was a curiosity about behavior that I developed in college. I think I was a good cop, but as a police chief, I wasn't what you'd call the greatest. You see, I wasn't in the arena anymore. I never had a chance to talk to or see an offender. So I decided what I needed was a laboratory. A place where I could conduct first-hand research on what makes a criminal tick. Well, what have you learned? Most importantly, that the only excuse for this place is to house the proven incorrigibles. You know, Americans invented this whole penitentiary system for one reason. Social vengeance. Oh, we throw words around like rehabilitation, reform. We don't mean a word of it. What we mean is punishment, pure and simple. Complain to the courts and the legislatures. They're responsible, not penology. You're flogging the wrong horse, Sam. Change the laws. Believe me, I'd like to. Prison has no logic, Mr. Randolph. All it does is manufacture violence and despair, and it's a shocking waste of taxpayers' money and human lives. It's a system we work under, Sam. Well, I don't have to like it. I know I can't change it alone, but I can chip away at it. I'll concern myself with the likes of Johnny Runson, because I might just prove something. Okay, Mr. Crusader. Just don't go too far out on a limb for a 17-year-old boy, because if you do, I'll have to sew it off. That's fair enough. to see you, Johnny. What for? To take the champagne plate on an airplane. How do I know? Clean up and get your jacket on. What's the matter? It's uh, that Indian boy. He's waiting outside. Well, so? He keeps looking at me. Maybe he finds you attractive. Mm-mm. It's not that kind of look. Warden, he... He looks at me like... like I was a wagon train. Where is that bloody thing? What? Oh, the TV section. Oh, there it is. Just wanted to make sure. M make sure of what? That my party has the right entertainment. Relax, dear. He checked his tomahawk at the gate.
Where are we going? My house. What's up? It's too late for you to get dinner in your cell. I thought maybe you could eat with me. What choice have I got? Done. some uh, checking on the Arapaho tribe. Your reservation's on the Papozi River in Wyoming, isn't it? I understand the Arapahoes originally came from Kansas, East Colorado. Fine warriors. I don't suppose you care much for your tribe. Nope. How old were you when you uh, left the reservation? Fourteen. How come you left? I got sick of it. Well, what was the matter? They're dirty. They live like pigs. The records show you were drunk when you were picked up. Do Arapahoes drink much? They got nothing else to do. Sounds like a lousy place. Oh, does it? I don't blame you for cutting out. Doesn't look like we're gonna get fed. Pardon me, gentlemen. Where's Chow? Ask Martinez. I'm ready. All right, I'll ask Martinez. Where's Chow? Go ahead. Send me back to the coal yard. Why should I send you back to the coal yard? Because I ain't gonna serve tonight. What's bugging you now? I ain't about to wait on some punk con, and that's all there is to it. I see. I'd rather go back to the coal yard. Well, you really got your neck bowed this time, haven't you? Warden, I'd never hear the end of it. Well, you can bring a con to dinner. That's up to you. But if I wait on him, my whole social position in this can would be undercut. Mr. Morrison, I'd lose face. Why, Dick? You're a snob. All right, Monsieur Le Tourneau, let's dish up the chop. It's dished. Oh, merci. Go ahead, don't let all that bother you. Listen, eat with your hands if you want to. It's all right here. What do you think I am? I don't know. What are you? I, uh, hear one of the things that riles you is the other guys giving the Indian war hoop. Now, how come you let a thing like that bother you? Who said it did? Calling the chief, I hear that kind of rouse you, too. Just sick of being called Indian, that's all. Aren't you an Indian? I left all that behind me. Oh, and it's simple. You just go around, tell everybody you're a white man, and let it go at that. I'm not a white man. Well, then what are you? You're not an Indian. You're not a white man. Maybe you're nothing. Hey, how about some TV? You ever see TV? Oh, no heck. Well, let's see what's on. Wanna watch a comedy show? Quiz show, eh? Hey, here's a good one. Bound for Oregon. It's an old movie, and it's good. 
Come on, bring your coffee. Let's go in. Oregon Trail. That goes through Wyoming, doesn't it? How should I know? You know, you got to give those people a lot of credit. Took a lot of guts. Strange country. Heat. Dust. Indians. Brave people. You know, without them, there wouldn't be any West today. outnumber the whites. I suppose they wouldn't fight otherwise. Uh -huh. Now they're gonna kill all the women and kids. They always did. Hey, here comes the cavalry. Now oh, the Indians will get their lumps. They never were very good against well-armed men. Hey, there goes the old chief. Well, he had it coming. Yay, there goes the chief's son. Oh, he deserved it. What do they all want up on a reservation? Shut your mouth! If you look at all my back, I'll kill you! You want a weapon? There's a poker over there. Why don't you take that? Oh, I forgot. Indians prefer knives. Better for scalping, isn't it? Get out of here. Go oh, on, both of you. Beat it. I'll handle this. Why do you always reach for a knife when somebody calls you in? Because guys like you, you sit and you watch that stinking show and you like it. You know why they were killing white men? Because they were being killed. They were being robbed. That's why. And they were better fighters than our soldiers do. A man is never too old or too young to cry, Johnny. Go ahead. Don't you know nothing? Indians don't cry. Oh, well, then you are an Indian. You admit it. Yes, white man. I'm an Indian. You satisfied? Well, then start off by admitting your real name. It's not Runson. I found out your Arapaho name is Johnny Runs More Sully. Why aren't you man enough to use it? I found out something else. You really hate white men, don't you? Why don't you understand why you hate them? Begin by knowing that nobody has more reason to hate a white man than an Indian. But hate with your brain, Johnny, not stupidly. I don't blame you for hating reservations. They're one of the most diabolical punishments ever invented by man. Cut a man off from the world, feed him, house him, meet his bare needs. And by so doing, strip him of all self-reliance and dignity like an animal in a zoo. Find reasons, boy. Read history. Read about the Sand Creek Massacre, where United States Cavalry murdered an Indian peace party of over 200 men, women, and children, mostly unarmed. And the colonel, you know what he said? 
kill and scalp all, big and little. Nits make lice. Lice, he said. You don't have to go back that far either. You saw the show tonight. Listen to the comedians today. Look at the commercials. You're the last race they can ridicule and nobody says stop it. The cigar store Indian jokes. Keep big chief. The cartoon commercials. Me make them plenty wampum, savings and loan, pay them 4%. Disgusting. I want you to hate those things. But don't go around just indiscriminately smashing any white man that couldn't care less who you are. And let them stop scraping me. They will stop the day you make peace with yourself and find pride in your heritage. Piece of this stuff, what do you expect me to like it here? No, I want you to hate it here. I want you to hate it so much you'll do anything to get out. I don't want you to find another reservation here like Chief Claw Eagle, where he's taken care of like an old pet dog. I don't want you to die here the way he's dying here. I want you to face the world, look it square in the eye. You have the courage. You proved that when you ran off from the reservation and made it on your own at 14. You fix it so I can face the world, and I'm doing 15 to 25. You'll be eligible for parole. Keep your nose clean. You'll hit the bricks in five or six years. You really don't mind asking, do you? I only ask one thing of you. Be proud of who you are. You are the 100% genuine American. Remember that. You know the way. The gate guard will pass you. He knows you're here. Makes you think I won't just take off. Wouldn't do any good. You've got your own walls around you, Johnny. You can get out of solitary whenever you feel you can stop belting people. It's up to you. All you have to do is ask. It's a pretty good challenge. See the old chief. But first, I want an hour in the wood shop. Tu no no sa de nothing. Cast. locks you, poor slobs. Beautiful women without rejection. And rich food and a fresh breeze blowing sweet across a lake. Dream of everything that you... Wait. Congratulations, Dr. Morrison. 
Please, please, come on. No gloating. 